to all the Conservative candidates and campaigners who worked tirelessly but without success, I am sorry that we could not deliver what your efforts deserve. Two generations after my grandparents came here with little, I could become Prime Minister and that I could watch my two young daughters like Diwali candles on the steps in Downing Street. What a night. It's official. Conservative have lost the elections. Labour has come back to power with amazing majority. Keir Starmer all set to become the Prime Minister. Rishi Sunak out of power. The guy has just made a farewell speech outside the 10 Downing Street and that is exactly why I am recording this video. I will analyze the election and how pro Gazan candidates haven't had as much successes as they expected uh, to have it. That's for a different video. Even uh, George Galloway, who we were thinking that should uh, retain his Rochdale seat, lost from there. And, and the Workers' Party um, as a whole has failed to win a single seat. So that's for a different video. Right now, the reason why I have been compelled to record this video is to uh, comment on what Rishi Sunak said in his farewell speech. He's sorry to the people of this country. He's sorry to his colleagues and he's sorry in general. But I don't think he's sorry to people of Gaza. I don't think he's sorry to all those people who stood for humanity. I mean, his tone today was in complete contrast to how he has conducted himself in the parliament as a prime minister. Now he talks about, he also talks about multiculturalism. He talks about British value of tolerance and he drags his daughters once again. He is grateful to this country for making him the first non-white prime minister. He is grateful to this country's tolerance that his two daughters were able to light Diwali, Diwali lights, Diwali Dia at the 10 Downing Street. But, but he's not concerned about the thousands of daughters in Gaza who have been brutally murdered because of his complicity. He's not sorry about that. Because for as long as he's not sorry about them, I don't think anybody is going to take his fake apology. Because the guy has been of course, we know that Britain under him, the British government under him, has crossed all the level of shamelessness. So much so, so much so, as if, as if siding with a genocidal regime for nine months wasn't enough, towards the fag end of his career, his government challenged the application for arrest warrant against Netanyahu and his colleague and his ministerial colleague at the International Criminal Court. Yes, British government has challenged that. So nobody is sorry for him to go. Because on one hand, you praise the British values. On the other hand, you stand for everything, everything that is inhuman. I am absolutely not sorry to see him go. You don't have to go that far. Just, just go through all his answers in the parliament in the last nine months. And how he conducted uh, uh, himself uh, on the question of uh, Lee Anderson making that Islamophobic comments and other issues. So I'm not sorry. I know some of you may be sorry. I'm not sorry at all. Good morning. I will shortly be seeing His Majesty the King to offer my resignation as Prime Minister. To the country, I would like to say first and foremost, I am sorry. I have given this job my all, but you have sent a clear signal that the government of the United Kingdom must change, and yours is the only judgment that matters. I have heard your anger, your disappointment, and I take responsibility for this loss. To all the conservative candidates and campaigners who work tirelessly but without success, I'm sorry that we could not deliver what your efforts deserved. It pains me to think how many good colleagues who contributed so much to their communities and our country will now no longer sit in the House of Commons. I thank them for their hard work and their service. Following this result, I will step down as party leader, 
not immediately, but once the formal arrangements for selecting my successor are in place. It is important that after 14 years in government, the Conservative Party rebuilds, but also that it takes up its crucial role in opposition professionally and effectively. When I first stood here as your Prime Minister, I told you the most important task I had was to return stability to our economy. Inflation is back to target, mortgage rates are falling, and growth has returned. We have enhanced our standing in the world, rebuilding relations with allies, leading global efforts to support Ukraine, and becoming the home of new generation of transformative technologies. And our United Kingdom is stronger too, with the Windsor framework, devolution restored in Northern Ireland, and our union strengthened. I'm proud of those achievements. I believe this country is safer, stronger, and more secure than it was 20 months ago. And it is more prosperous, fairer, and resilient than it was in 2010. Whilst he has been my political opponent, Sir Keir Starmer will shortly become our Prime Minister. In this job, his successes will be all our successes, and I wish him and his family well. Whatever our disagreements in this campaign, he is a decent, public-spirited man who I respect. He and his family deserve the very best of our understanding as they make the huge transition to their new lives behind this door and as he grapples with this most demanding of jobs in an increasingly unstable world. I'd like to thank my colleagues, my cabinet, the civil service, especially here in Downing Street, the team at Chequers, my staff, CCHQ, but most of all, I'd like to express my gratitude to my wife, Akshatha, and our beautiful daughters. I can never thank them enough for the sacrifices they have made so that I might serve our country. One of the most remarkable things about Britain is just how unremarkable it is that two generations after my grandparents came here with little, I could become prime minister and that I could watch my two young daughters light Diwali candles on the steps in Downing Street. We must hold true to that idea of who we are, that vision of kindness, decency, and tolerance that has always been the British way. This is a difficult day, at the end of a number of difficult days. But I leave this job honored to have been your Prime Minister. This is the best country in the world, and it is thanks entirely to you, the British people, the true source of all our achievements, our strengths, and our greatness. Thank you. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, please do so because that's one of the many ways you can support independent journalism.